Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Oh, what was that guy's deal? Wow. <laughs> he was pretty strange. <laughs> Riser. Hello, Riser. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. I fit in this body better than now that I had a tail reduction. Can you tell us more about that tail reduction? I've been wondering about that. <laughs> well, we're reptilians. We, well, certain species of reptilians can remove their have their tails removed. Some of them are born without a huge tail. Some of them have a big, huge tail. It's just part of, you know, your genetics. So, yeah, I had, a, I had to have some of it removed to, to be able to get in here properly. But I get a lot of ripping around my planet for that. So, it's all right. It'll grow back. <clears throat> <laughs> what what tail does your function have for your body or your uh, radar or it, it doesn't really have much function anymore. It used <laughs> to have a function, but it doesn't have much of a function right now. I mean it's just sort of decorative. If you want to, I mean a big tail <laughs> is real it's popular, so <laughs> um, but they used to be sensory uh, they used to be uh, used for sensing things and for defense and things like that. But right now, I mean, yeah, not much use, really. So that's why I said, hey, what the heck? Got it reduced. A tail reduction. <laughs> just so I can do this. I've never, I've never spoken to you before. I just want to say I've watched a lot of the webinars and... You're by far one of the celebrities. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming oh, through. Yeah. I asked you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Brad Pitt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> much prettier. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I studied all that stuff. Yeah, I see who he is. Uh, everybody loves Brad Pitt. They <laughs> love me just like, like Brad Pitt. So. Well, I guess I, I, I wanted to ask you. We were talking about negativity early and and negativity in humans especially and I was curious about the use of code words or programming programming emotions and yeah. concepts into a word or into an image that you could call upon when you were in times of stress or times of conflict so I was curious if you could talk about how to create these kinds of words or images and if you know what I'm talking about, if you use that in your race. Well, we do, we have used it. They've become obsolete in some way. But I can tell you, what, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, there was a time during our war time when you would call upon the, the inner strength and they would have a word that would be attached to bring that out. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm kind of talking about T like when you're about to enter a negative situation, maybe yeah. programming a word or ha using meditation yeah, in a way. Exactly. When we're, we were about to enter a battle, there was a, we brought a code word for to bring out our strength and our endurance and our highest understanding and um, intellectual thought for that period. So there was a slight time of meditation before battle. Yes. How 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 can we humans work on doing that? Or do you have any? It has to, it has to be individualized, though. You have to understand. We didn't all use the same word. We didn't all just go, uh, "Ramba bamba," and there it is. But um, I had a special word that I use, which is private, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because you could say it and it draws, it would make me react in certain ways. But I have myself programmed for this particular word so that I could be my best in battle. Now, now you can do that to you. Yourself. Wow. 
Pardon me? Oh, how can we as humans do that? It's easy. You just uh, do a meditation. You uh, you do a intention meditation for that sort of thing, and you do it many times. The more you do it, the stronger you can be. But then you you can call on that word, because the, your spirit guides will give you the word. Uh, okay. It is it's not cool. that you will be familiar to you right away. But it will become familiar to you. Does that make sense to you? Ah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, your spirit guides will give you a word that nobody else will know. See, if, uh, if people know you real well, they could probably guess your word. Or, or at least assume that they can get close to it. But with the spirit guides giving you the word, nah, they won't even get even that. Take it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Riser. This is yeah. uh, I'm going to ask a question for Adriana. Um, she said um, that she said I wanted to know who was the reptilian being I saw at the park. He approached me and said something in a strange language. Yeah, yeah. She wants to know what that was about. All right. What was her name? Adriana. She's here, but she I guess she doesn't have a, a mic. Ah, Adriana. Yeah, that was one of our people. Yeah. Um, what did he want? I'm not yeah. sure. But uh, I could ask him. Hold on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he knows that you know about reptilians, so he wanted to know what you thought about him. He, he was sort of like, like uh, he didn't know that you couldn't understand him. Since you know about reptilians, he thought if he spoke reptilian, you would understand it. But next time he'll talk to you in English, all right? I, he asked you some questions, that's all. Like, what are you doing here? Why are you, why are you in the park? You know, I... Uh, but you didn't understand what he was talking about. He was just making small talk, basically. <laughs> okay, sure, you're next. Hello, uh, Raijo. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I hear you. Can I ask you about uh, reptilians in Israel? Uh, what? If there's any reptilians in Israel in the politician. Oh yeah, well, they're, they try, yeah. They try, they didn't succeed? There's a lot of reptilians in Israel and in the ah. Middle East. But if I will give you some names. Some of those guys, yeah. They've gotten to some of those guys, but not to everybody. But they've gotten to more of the, the Russians than they have to the Middle Easterns because they're hard heads down there. They really they really have an agenda and they stick to it. But they've got made some headway into that because they um, pretend like they're part of their agenda, so they listen to them. Yeah. Mm. If I will give you some uh, politics names in Israel, can you tell me if they're involved? All right, I can. I may be able to tell you. Okay, um, Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. The prime minister. Yeah. One moment. He has. A reptilian working very close to him. However, they don't see eye to eye on everything. Some things, yes, but not everything. They they argue a lot in a very, very, very high class way. So mm -hmm. they they but they do argue. Can you tell me what his name is? Who the reptilian? Yeah, if it's okay. No, I'm not allowed to to do do that. No. Okay. Close. He's one of his advisors. Oh. And okay. Can... works for him very closely. Yep. Okay. Can I give you some more names? 
Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, Yair Lapid. What? Yair Lapid. Yair Lapid. I don't know who that is. Okay, your luck then. Uh, Lieberman. Oh, Lieberman, I know who that is. Yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so he's involved with reptilians? Uh, not directly, but uh, he's met with them before, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't really like reptilians very much. But he does listen to them sometimes. Okay. Um, bougie. Yeah, Bougie, yeah. He's definitely attached to some what? reptilians. Yeah. Bougie yeah. attached with reptilians? Yep, a little bit. Holy sh... He's a good guy or... Um... Yes, but he's one of those guys that keep your enemy close and then you'll know what they're up to. So, yeah... He, he's not, he doesn't agree with him or anything, but he is definitely has a lot of reptilian uh, access. Let's put it that way. So, but he, he does not listen to their advice, but he definitely listens to what they have to say. <laughs> but his uh, intentions are good or bad? Oh, his intentions are very good, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, Bennett. Uh, Bennett, I don't know. He wearing a kippah. He's a Jewish fellow. He has many influence. He's trying to be, become prime that. minister. Um, I don't know. I really don't know because um, if if he has any reptilian uh, contacts, I don't know who they are. Hmm. Okay. Um. Thank you very very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much surprise, love. Surprise, surprise, everybody has reptilian contacts in in the governments there, but they don't always listen to them. That's that's the story. But <laughs> that some of them don't even know that they're reptilians because they've refused to believe it. I mean, they've been told they've been told that they're reptilians. They just oh, don't so believe. yeah, Benjamin Netanyahu and all of those. Knows about them? They know that they're. They've been told. Yes. Yeah, but they don't believe it. Some mm. of them. Don't. But the, your one guy does. The one that that the real good guy. He's aware Bougie. of it. Bougie aware of them. Yeah, he is aware of them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Ha. Go. This is Sabrina. Yeah. I have a question for you. Since you have uh, dealt with the U.S. government, mm, yeah, well, in the you military. were in the military, yeah, yeah. So um, maybe you can help us with this. Um, yeah. About there seems to be a challenge about transporting people to the ships. Yeah, um, because of some deal that was made. Uh, what yeah. advice would you give about that? Well, you see, the problem is that um, whenever they made the contract, it wasn't as, it wasn't specific enough, and so they did say that they were allowed to help the Earth with the weather and the seismic and the volcanic, and that they were allowed to talk to people through channeling situations and stuff like that, but they were not allowed to interact with humans in a third dimensional way. Okay. It's stated that third dimensional way, okay? And so, uh, they want to take humans off the earth and bring them to the colonies, and that's taking out of third dimension into a different area. So that's a breach of contract, according to the politicians. But according to the Grukvignir, 
they're saying, well, we're not interacting with them on Earth. We're bringing, we're not even coming to Earth. We're bringing them to the ship. However, and we're interacting with them there. So they said, no, no, no. If you take them in their third dimensional off the Earth, that's affecting their, that's interacting with third dimension. But so they see they have a big argument there. They have a big argument there because they were not specific. Well, it says third dimension. It does not say anything about teleporting or anything like that. That they would have. So they're working on making an addendum or presenting your your politicians with a way to get around it. But they haven't they haven't got around it yet because they're saying if you take our people off the earth. That's deal. That's a deal breaker. Okay, now how, where does our free will come in on this? Oh, it doesn't, dear. <laughs> no, uh, your government is not free will. No, uh, your free will is to say yes. I can. I'll go if they let me. But your government is saying you're not going. So that that's not your free will. That's their free will. Exactly, and and that's that's where uh, some of us, you know, are a bit, uh, I guess, annoyed over this because um, it it should be our decision to make. I understand if they're protecting, if they were protecting us, but if we are making the decision to go, yeah, well, it, it's just like a law. You don't break if you break the law. That was your free will to break it, but they it's their free will to throw you in the pen or whatever. Right. So, yeah, when it comes to this, your government is in control. You have no say at this point. Okay, now, taking, it up, taking us off planet, it's not on 3D. So, I don't understand how they could even argue that. Yes. Well, they're saying you're in 3D when the beam comes down. If they take, you're allowed to go astrally because your body is still on the Earth. If they take your physical body off the Earth, that's the that's uh, messing with third dimension, and it's a breach of their contract. Do you understand? Yes. Now, how does that work when there's other civilizations doing it? They don't have a contract with them. Right. So, yeah, they were sort of stupid to make a contract almost. But the reason why they did is so they could help because they would not let them help because part of the contract is don't take over our, our area. Don't take over our government. Don't take over this. That's why they let them help is because they said they wouldn't take over anything. Right? That was what the contract is basically about. There's a lot of other little stuff in there, but it's basically don't take us over. Don't be the ruler. Let us stay in charge. When does the contract end? Uh, that I don't know. I wasn't there. But uh, I know that it's still enforced right now. No. But they're trying to make addendums to it. Okay. Now, what do you know when this contract was made? About uh, seven years ago, maybe six. But uh, it wasn't really, uh, they really didn't start helping too much until, it, the contract was made, but it wasn't uh, pounded out till about five years ago. Okay. Because the weather started to get really bad. I started to get, it's still pretty bad now. I mean, it's not going to get better. Let's put it that way. Yeah, because my my question is how because it's it, it we're we're sort of going in a circle because obviously they don't want to lose control. Oh, and, sure. and this is about empowering us. So I do you see the conundrum here? Of course, but it's. Your government that made the the whole mess, really. Yeah. If it just a, would have let us let them help without doing all this crap. Exactly. 
just help us, you know, but your government is too suspicious and too uh, paranoid to do anything without writing. And they're still paranoid about that, even though there's a treaty and all that stuff. They, they know that it can be broken, you know, but they're, the fact that they put it in place was a trust factor, okay? So, because they, it's better to have one than not, according to your government. Do you understand that? Okay, now, now, now why did they have to ask the government? Because the government would shoot the, those freaking UFOs out of the sky if they, as soon as they detected them, so that's why. So they have the capability to do that? Well, yeah, they do in some ways, yeah. And, but the thing is, who wants to be shot at all the time, you know? Yeah, You're gonna, no, I agree. So there, it's like, don't shoot at, that's part of the contract that you, that they, the ships can be there. And okay. they, don't, they know the ships are there. They're in fourth dimension. But they can, you see, your your government can shoot down a fourth dimensional ship. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because that was the other question. Yeah. How, do, how does a third dimensional weapon shoot a fourth uh, dimensional ship? Other aliens that give them the the information to do it because they don't want Gurfik near to help you. So they'll give them the technology to shoot out a fourth dimensional ship. Sure. That helps them. Okay. And that would be, I guess, the ones not wanting us There's ascending. No, don't know about what's going on with all these freaking aliens. They're just, it's a mess on your planet. Wow. <laughs> I mean, and, they're everywhere. And they're, and nobody knows who to trust or whatever. It's just ridiculous. But it's still working so far. But uh, my personal thought, it's going to break down one of these days because just it's just too much. Okay. So. Let me ask you, um, do you do you know Bashar? Do you know who he is? Oh, yeah. Bashar, yeah. Okay. He recently made some predictions. What? Uh, about the Earth, um, something happening this year, towards the end of the Fire. year. Yeah, I think it'll be more 2016, but yeah, he could be right. Okay, that that that. Okay, and what about um? I don't know. There's there are numerous predictions that he made. Do you know anything about that? I really don't pay much attention to all these other channelers. They always contradict each other, and I yes. find them to be. So anyway, um, but. You know what? To make a prediction like some of the ones that he made, he has to have some. He has to have visited another timeline, and according to galactic law and stuff like that, um, that it's interesting that, that he's allowed to. Right, because so, he's never done that before. So no, I don't, I mean, he's never made predictions before. So that means he had to visit another timeline. So, whatever, I just hope he visited the right timeline to give the right predictions. Right. And that's, that was my next question, because how does he know that we're going to ship to that timeline? That is a very good question, and my question as well. Because if he's shifted to the wrong timeline and he made these predictions, then they're not going to happen. But let me tell you something about Rashar. He's pretty bright. He's a bright guy. He's very, very in tune. <laughs> so um, uh, I have a feeling that uh, they allowed him to do a little bit extra. So Okay, because then we have, on top of that, we have the L predictions. Yes, the L predictions are also, you have to look at another timeline. Yep. Um, because so, like, in the meantime, there's a lot of variables. Right. You know what I mean? Things yes. that they may not have foreseen with all these freaking aliens coming down, they, they might interfere some way that will change everything. So, you don't know. Yeah, because it, it also seems that there's a lot of aliens coming in to watch the show. Yeah. 
That's what I just said. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a craft shoot. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Angela had a question. Yeah. Hit it, girl. You need to unmute yourself. Uh, all right, hold on. Ah, uh, there you are. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to know if you knew anything about the crystal skulls that that are around now. Yeah, they're they're gonna get together. They're all right. The crystal skulls have a lot of different representations. So, um. They they have energy together. When they're when you bring them together, they're going to have a great amount of energy. There's 13 of them, I understand. 12 of them and one in the center. And the central one is the controller. And the 12 are for the stargates. You have 12 stargates around your planet, and they're they're the actual controllers of the stargates. And the middle one is the controller of all the controllers. So um, you're going to find that it's a very interesting time when those come together because the Stargates will appear. All right. I see. Is um, the uh, leader in Russia still controlled by a reptilian? Yes. Interesting. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Yeah, he's still controlled. Um, they're trying to give him a little bit more of emotional lately because it's been noticed that he's been like a blank sheet of paper. You you see him and he's like nothing there. So they're trying to give him a little more emotion so people don't believe. You know, start really believing that he's a reptilian. So, but he's just controlled by him. He's not really a reptilian, but boy, he's he's starting to have a little more emotion. It's it's not working for him though. He's not one that works with emotion well. So, so I have a question. <laughs> yeah, you said there were twelve in a circle with one in the center. Yeah, I've been getting a different. Configuration over yes. the past couple of years is oh, what is it? more of a stellated dodecahedron. Oh, okay. Like a star. Well, yes, you can put it like that. Yes, it's it's not a circle really. It's but I'm just saying there's one in the center. Right. But the 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 format of the of the the uh, skulls is however it's supposed to be, and that could be a dodecahedron because they were, those are popular in in space. So I'm not quite sure because I'm not really privy to all the crystal skull information, I, but I do know they are all there. They're all existing at this time. I think they're all found actually at this point. So beware, they'll be coming together one of these days. And then the Stargates will appear. Is that what you got, Stargates? So, yes. All right. Very good. The configuration is on some kind of alien parchment somewhere, but and I know somebody has it, but I don't know. Uh, hi. Have you and I ever met before? Uh, we met a couple times, yeah. What was it like? You were curious about who I was and all that stuff and um, cuz you're you're actually a a very inquisitive guy about all different kinds of species so you're like a you're like keep a, a mental record of different species that you met so yeah we had a small conversation and I was uh it, it was right after you came back from the colonies once because I had a question for you about the colonies. I won't. I, I was going to ask you about your sexual exploits in the colonies. So, uh, but we did not. Um, we didn't really. Uh, I didn't really uh, get much from you on that. So we'll see. What did I say? You did say that 
that that was sort of none of my business. But um, but you were saying there is some, but it's none of your business. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I never remember going to the colonies. I know. Um, you remember talking to me? No. Ah, bummer. Um, not too long ago, the United States Air Force released their UFO files. How will this affect us? Yeah, those things. You know, the file that they released has been doctored. So don't take too much. Don't put too much into that. I mean, some of the files are okay because they don't say anything. But some of the ones that have real accounts, they did not release. The, some of the real juicy stuff is still top secret. They released hundreds of thousands of pages of stuff that's benign. So, um, in many senses. Did you look at it yet? I looked at it, but I quickly just left because I knew that there would be nothing interesting. There's nothing interesting. Yawn! That's what it is. <laughs> so, this is a big yawn. 100,000 yawns. That's all it is. Also, so, you, uh, yeah, I believe sometime in the past you said that you're not and you weren't really interested in Earth movies. Not really. Well, there's I'm, one coming up I next <laughs> I think Godzilla's a hoot, but I, they made it over and over again. I like every version of Godzilla. I think that's one of my favorites, but I don't watch very many other ones. That Godzilla one is funny, though. That is a hoot. Well, there's one. There's an interesting movie coming out next month called Jupiter's Ascending, and that one has reptilians in it. Ah, very good. I'll have to look into that one. I think you'll love it. Oh, have you seen it? It's not out yet. I've only seen the trailer. Ah, trailer. Oh, okay, yeah, trailer. Okay. Hey, hey, Riser. Um, I just had a really quick question. I was curious what you could tell me about. There's a Pleiadian race, and they're actually blue skin, and they're the tall blue skinned ones. <laughs> yeah. And it's usually the they seem to wear a shawl, like a kind of cloak. And yeah. usually the women or the men have like a bindi, like a dot in their forehead, and they usually yeah. have um, very crystal-like eyes. I was curious what you could tell me about the race, the names, and all that stuff. Oh yeah, wow! I have, they're Pleiadians. They're the tall Pleiadians, uh, but they're not the they're not in contact with the Earth right now. They they were for a while. They moved out. They're they're regrouping to do some explorations of different places as well as Earth. And um, they will be back. But what did you want to know, really? They're just in the Pleiadian system. They are yeah. blue-skinned. They do have crystal kind of eyes. Uh, they, Their eyes are very shiny. I don't know if you call them crystal, but you're shiny anyway. But, um, and they're... Um, they're a nomadic sort of tribe, sort of thing. They they do have a home planet, and it's in the Pleiades, but they do sort of roam around. All of them, uh, at, now that they have space uh, availability to get into space, they, they like to roam around. However, they, uh, a couple of their ships have been exploded by gas pockets in space, so... They have to be. They they went back to regroup because they lost the ship recently. What's their um, race name? And do they? Is it a feminine race? Like, are there males in that race? Yeah, because there's males. Well, yeah, there are males and females, but they're moving into a unitarian kind of species where, um, but that's like, I could go on talk about. They're sort of boring. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah, they're, they're sort of boring. So you really don't want to know that much about that. Uh, they're, they're coming back. Yeah. Um, old Riser, hi, this is Safira. Hey. Um, 
There is one more question, but if you or Jim are too tired, then we can end it here. Would you have energy for one more question? <laughs> There is only one more question, so go for it. Okay, this is from Shron. Go ahead, Shron. Sephira. Hello, Riser. <laughs> Thank Hello. you for being here. You're really uh, hilarious this morning. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, I didn't get it. Awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask if you could tell us about your favorite memory up to date, up to, so far. Uh, my favorite human memory or reptilian memory? Either one, whichever one you prefer. Uh, okay, well I have a lot of favorites actually. But I won an award. Uh, about, I won an award. What, what? Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. I won an award for my military strategy about, I don't know, 42 years ago or something. But that was one of the highlights of my life is that uh, they recognized me for my strat strategic uh, abilities. And that was an earthly, that was sort of an earthly remembrance because I was, I was very, very good on earth. I was very strong, very, uh, I had a great brain and stuff, so, yeah. Do you remember who you were? Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you who that was. How could because I became somebody of sort of notoriety, so. Right. So I couldn't really tell you that. <laughs> but you'll figure it out someday. <laughs> yeah, you'll figure it out. I rose through the ranks. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, if that's right. it, I'm going to go. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for coming, Walt Reiser. Please remember to tell Bougie my love. message. Much love. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I got to go. This I'm bringing back the gym guy. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye, <Roger. laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, whatever. No, you can't come in. Okay, Doc. Hi, hey, Doc. Hello, everybody. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. Hello. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? I feel good. Good. I want some coffee. 